This is Randy. Randy was my student, who in eighth grade was on a list of students who were unlikely to graduate. One day, after school, I came back to my classroom to find Randy and another student sitting at a computer totally engrossed in a YouTube channel called Science Experiments You Could Do at Home, of which Randy had done them all. I asked him, what's your grade in science? It's an F. Here we have a 14-year-old boy passionate about science, intrinsically motivated to learn it, teaching someone else. He should not only have an A in science, he should be the model student. And then he looks at me and he says, I love science. And the way he tells me, tells me that he knows that this doesn't make any sense. And when I drove home that night, I was pissed off and I cried. Because Randy's story is all too common. Upwards of 40% of students are chronically disengaged in school, according to a National Research, Research Council report on motivation. If students are bored in school, they are unlikely to benefit from better standards, curriculum, or instruction, unless their lack of motivation is addressed. A colleague of mine at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, she's a PhD candidate, um, she recently con conducted a series of interviews with 12 incarcerated males who all reported evidence of being disengaged and bored in school. We know from John Medina's brain rules work that the brain doesn't pay attention to boring things. Conversely, we know students want to learn and do learn when they're learning something they're excited about. I want you to think about your experience in school. Maybe you were lucky and you had a great one. Or maybe you, like Randy, had found yourself checked out or going through the motions. Now I want you to think of your most meaningful learning experience, most memorable. Chances are you're thinking of something that happened outside of school, maybe in a camp setting or on a trip or outdoors or watching some really great art. In my experience, our current system and our current model of the US public school has a set of barriers that limit when, where, and what kind of learning can happen. The first one is inflexibility. Everyone is expected to learn the same thing at the same time, the same pace, in the same way, and changing any of that means you have to go through a lot of red tape. Isolation. Students are separated by ability, and they're made to sit inside of a building most of the day. Teachers rarely collaborate together across disciplines. Field trips, and especially extended learning opportunities in the real world, are extremely rare. Pretty much the entire school is isolated from society. And when you have schools that are isolated and inflexible, what you have is an incomplete education. So, we can't afford to miss a scientist. When you have an incomplete education, you have students who are not able to learn what they want to learn. If we prohibit students from learning what they're interested in learning, we may roadblock their motivation to learn, and possibly a path to their future career. And we can't do that. We can't afford to miss a scientist. We can't afford to miss an artist or a leader. We can't afford to lose another kid to the prison system. So, feeling the weight of these barriers and inspired by students like Randy, I came up with a theory. If we reimagine schools in a way that supports and recognizes real-world learning, students will be able to find learning everywhere for the rest of their lives. So, what did I do? Well, I was able to go to work on this theory at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, where I further developed the model for Out of the Box Learning Studio. This is my attempt at shining a light in the darkness. So what did I do? Well, like any motivated graduate student, I went around and looked what other people were doing, and I stole stuff. I traveled the country and I looked at structures of schools that showed flexibility and interconnectedness, who were giving students personalized learning experiences and prioritizing student engagement. And I'm here to tell you that these places, they exist. I've seen them. There is hope. 
So here are a couple elements of the model. Every student has a personalized learning plan that gets their goals and their needs and their interests as a guideline for the rest of their school experience. Students are learning in real-world situations, doing interdisciplinary projects, solving real problems. The city becomes your extended classroom as students are connected to resources, museums, parks, businesses, people and places in the community. Then I learned about badges. This is by far the coolest thing that I saw. Students are able to demonstrate their learning through media and earn credit for their learning through the digital open badge. If you haven't heard of open badges, I don't have time to tell you about it. You should go Google it. It's amazing. It's a real game changer. A school like this would benefit students like Randy. But it's just one idea. There are a lot of ideas out there, a lot of people with good ideas. We just need to pay attention to them. People who have ideas about how to make school an exciting place for kids, where they're learning and thinking and creating at high levels, and where they're doing work that really matters to them and really matters to the community. And we're gonna need these people. Our planet needs these people, right? People who can look at the, at the complex problems of the world and think creatively and resourcefully about how to solve them. And we need to do our part and shine a light on these examples. And if we do, then we can get closer to graduating students who can find learning everywhere, wherever they go and whatever they do for the rest of their lives.